Hi and welcome to Project Building. In today's episode, we will be creating a GUI for an MP3 player program. And by the end of the episode, we will have a program which looks like this. We will be using three Python libraries, one of which is not built in and will have to be installed separately, which is called PySimpleGUI. We can start by importing our libraries as import PySimpleGUI SSG, then from pathlib import path as well as import OS. PySimpleGUI is a Python library, which is one of the simplest library for building Python GUIs. Pathlib will help us with locations of files while adding songs into our program, and the OS module will be used here and there to periodically add something we might need. For now, our program will be almost fully written in a main function. So we will start by defining it, def main, without any parameters, and with PySimpleGUI, the first thing we want to do is set the theme of our GUI, we can do so by using sg.theme, and then in the brackets we need to input a string of the theme. There is a lot of different themes, I will include a link to all of the themes in the description. The one we will be using is called dark brown one. Now I will define some variables which we will use later, the first one being the song list, which will be an empty array. Then the song amount, which will be an integer, and lastly, title font. Title font will actually be a list of two different things. On index 0, we will be inputting the actual font we want our titles to use, and then after it, we will input the font size. So I will start by defining Arial and giving it a font 15. If you follow this tutorial directly, you're gonna end up with the same program as me, but feel free to modify and swap things around to see what you can come up with. The way PySimple GUI works is it places things in boxes which then can be arranged any way you like if you just know how to do it. So the thing we're gonna start with is defining the left box which will contain our list of songs. Let's call it our left layout and it's going to be equal to an array. Inside of our layout array is actually now all of the widgets and objects we input into our GUI and the way they are placed on screen is if they are inside of the same index, they will be placed horizontally next to each other and if instead they are placed on the next index, they will be placed below the first thing vertically. For our first layout, we only need one row for now, so we will add just one array inside of it. And if you look at this part right here, which is what I want to add now, it's actually a button which is simply disabled because I thought it would look nicer than a simple text line. So if we want to add it into our array inside of our layout, we will input sg.button with a capital B, and then inside of the brackets, we want to pass it all of the arguments which we want to modify. The first thing I will add is actually the text on the button. So it will be a string saying list of songs. Then I will actually modify the size of the button. So size equals a list into which I will put 20 and 1, which are the width and height of our button. And lastly, I will set its argument disabled to be true so that our button is not clickable. If you want to use more arguments than the ones I presented, you can see the list of them here while typing in the parameters. For now, that is it for our left layout because we will be modifying it using a loop later down the line. Next thing we'll add is our middle layout, the one which says playing placeholder song with the slider below it. We will do so by defining middle layout, which will actually contain two separate arrays this time. Make sure to separate them by a comma in between. So if my first array is here and I put a comma, I can put my second array below. Our first array, so our first row in our program, will contain a status bar. sg.statusBar, which will be displaying text saying playing placeholder song. Then we can define its font, font equals title font, which we defined earlier in our variables. Then I'll just modify the size to be 26 by 1 and the padding to be 10. And now in our second row, I will add a slider. But since there will be a lot of changes I will be making to the slider using its parameters, I will press enter to open my array so that what I'm doing with it will be more visible. We start by defining sg.slider and then we will pass it on a bunch of parameters. The first one being its range. For now, let's set it to from 0 to 1000. The default value, which will be 0, its orientation, which is horizontal, the size 34 by 5, the border width, 
of 1. We will also disable the number display and set its background color to white. And that will be it for our middle layout. Now we will be defining the right side of our GUI, which is this slider over here with a speaker image above it. So we'll define our right layout, which will again contain two things. The first one being image sg image. And in here, you want to input a string containing the path to the image you're going to use. As you can see on the left, I have a folder called images, inside of which I have a speaker.png. So inside of here, I'm going to open a string and then type images double backslash to tell our program that I'm not using an escape character, but rather I just wanted to input a backslash speaker.png. And then finally, in our second line, we will add our slider sg.slider with range of 0 to 100 because it's our volume, vertical orientation, size of 17 by 15, order width of 1, default value, let's set it to 25, this is the value at which the slider starts when you open the program, disable number display equals true, as well as a background color white, just like before. And now it's time for the last part, which would be our bottom layout, on which we could add a single song or import a folder of songs. Same step as before, bottom layout equals, and again we will only have two rows, so we can add in two arrays, and we will start with the first one containing text, so sg text which will be add a song then we'll give it a size of 10 by 1 and then actually outside of the brackets we will put a comma here to input another thing into our first row so that it's on the right side of our text and it will be sg.input and our input will take two things the first one being its key which is the value it can be accessed from key equals add song and then the second value size equal to 10 by 1. Then again, outside of the brackets, another comma, so we can input a third object on the same horizontal line, which will be sg.filebrowse. File browse is that button over here, which you can see, which allows the user to browse through their computer to find some files. In PySimple GUI, if you put the browse button right next to an input window, anything selected in that browse window will be inserted into our input. And inside of our file browse, we will input file types equals, and first off, we'll give it a name, sound files, and then we will actually specify a type inside of a string by inputting two asterisks, in between which we will say dot mp3. Let me just split it to separate lines since the line was too long. And then after our file browse, we only have one button to add at the end, sg.button, which will have a name add and a size of 8 by 1. That's it for our first row. We can now go on to the second one. Make sure that your square bracket is always after the last element in each array. The second row will be very similar. sg text import songs size 10 by 1. Next, sg.input key import songs size 40 by 1. And I actually noticed I made a mistake. In our first input, it should also be 40 by 1. And now after the input, it's going to change slightly because instead of file browse, we will be adding folder browse, which we will leave empty for now. And then at the end, sg.button import with the size of 8 by 1. And now we have basically placed all of those elements. We just need to now glue them together and arrange them in the proper way. But before doing so, I actually want our program to first change our left layout by adding all of the songs from our song folder. As you can see, I have a song folder over here, which contains multiple copies of the same thing. And I want my program to be able to detect those songs and then display them in the program, just like you can see over here. Because currently, our left layout only contains a single disabled button saying a list of songs, and we need to append all of those songs below it. So we will start by defining a variable, songs in folder, which will be actually equal to os list their songs. With this command from our OS module, we will get a list of all the files contained in our songs folder, and it will be saved to our songs in folder variable. After creating the variable, we will use a for loop for song and songs in folder, which will first off append each of those songs to our song list. Song list dot append, but our OS module actually lists us the paths of those files and not really their names. So to deal with that, we will use our pathlib module. We can do so by using then giving it the value we wanted to modify. So our song from our for loop dot stem using the stem method allows us to separate the name of the song from the rest of its file location. And then we will simply add plus one to our song amount. 
Then after this loop, we will need a second for loop, which will actually take all of those names we just separated and input them into our left layout so it can be displayed in the GUI. For song in song list, left layout dot append, and for each song we will append an array, so open square brackets containing sg dot button with the name of the song converted into a string and then size 20 by 2. And now comes the part of gluing everything together and finishing off our GUI. First, we will actually need to define a new variable, which will be containing all of the elements from the left side, so our left layout, our middle layout, and our bottom layout, so we can add them over here. So we will start by defining main layout left, which will be an array, inside of which we will place another array, and now in here we will add our first object, which will be sg column. Column is an object which will allow us to put those separation points in between things. And as parameters to our column, first thing we add is actually our left layout, then we will set its vertical alignment, which will be top, and we will make our left layout scrollable. So scrollable equals true. And then we will set it to vertical scroll only, because on default a horizontal scroll is also displayed. And lastly, we will set our size without giving it a width, so instead we will give it an object of none and then the height of 300. After our column object but still inside of the same brackets we will input a comma and then another object which will be sg.v separator which is the actual vertical line you can see on screen here and then lastly we will add sg.column with our middle layout and vertical alignment top. Now after those brackets we will input a comma and then open new ones where we will input sg.horizontal separator so h separator which will be our horizontal line over here after which we open another brackets with sg.column bottom layout. So now we have glued everything together apart from our slider on the right so we will do that now. We will create our last variable which will be the main layout. We'll set it to an array again and inside the first thing will be another array containing sg title bar. Title bar is actually an object which changes the physical top bar of your program to match with the layout or whatever you set it to. And we can also give it a name to display music player. The next array and it will actually contain three things. The first one sg.column which will be our main layout left so our whole thing here containing all the other things. After which we will add sg.vertical separator again and then finally sg.column containing our right layout with element justification to center. And that would be all of the layouts our entire program is currently designed. And now we just have to make it work, which is like six more lines of code. First, we'll set our window to be equal to sg.window called music player and with a second parameter of our main layout. After that, we actually need to define a loop while true, which will be going on while our GUI is working. In that loop, we will be actually detecting all of the events which happen in our program and then manipulate them to synchronize our code with the GUI. First, off we have to set event as well as values to be equal to window.read which is how we get all of the inputs from our GUI. Then we will use a print statement which will be only for our convenience displaying to the console all of the events which happen so that we can fix problems easier. We will print our event and values. Then if event equals sg.winclosed with capital letters, we will simply break out of the loop. And if we break out of the loop, we're going to do window close, which will close our program. Now that the entirety of our program is actually defined, we can go at the end outside of our function and simply call it with main and brackets. If we run our file now, as you can see, our program runs and it actually found one mistake I made. I will show you how to fix it real quick. When inputting the file type over here, we actually have to enclose that in another set of brackets then input a comma after the first one and that should fix the issue. If we run it again, you can see there is no more problems and our GUI is fully functional. You can actually use the browse buttons to look for your things and then you can even press on your files to open them and as you can see, the location of that file is actually inserted into our input window. And like I mentioned before, our print statement here is only placed there so we can actually read what's happening in our window. So if I, for example, press our song, you can see that it detected our song being pressed or if I press add, you can see that it was also detected. And that would be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.